Hello students, welcome. Previously, lesson 6, form 4 to week 6, we were dealing with the first part of detergents where we have seen soapy detergents. Remember, we said we have two types of detergents. The first one was soapy detergent and the next one was soapless detergents. So in this class, lesson 7, we are going to do number 1, preparation of soapless detergents. Number 2, effects of hard water on detergents number three environmental pollution caused by detergents number four advantages and disadvantages of detergents number five we are going to do comparison or differences between soapy and surplus detergents and number six we are going to conclude with two extended questions so kindly stay with us until the end of the video to start surplus detergents we are saying surplus detergents are commonly referred to as detergents. When we are dealing with soapy detergents, we say that they are also known as soaps. So examples of soapless detergents include OMO. So next we are saying these are detergents in which a carboxylic group of the soap is replaced by an alkyl sulfonate group. So the first part that we have here is the formula for soap. It is written R dash C O O dash N A plus or K plus. So remember we said soap is sodium or potassium salt. So here R is the long chain hydrocarbon and this is the carboxylic group. So when we want to change the formula for soap detergent to soapless detergent, the long hydrocarbon chain or tail remains and the carboxylic group of the soap is replaced by an alkyl sulfonate group and sulfonate group it is written SO3 then we are going to have the sodium ion or potassium ion so if we don't want to use sulfonate group we can use sulfate group and sulfate group will be written so what we are going to have there will be R dash O SO3 minus Na plus or we can put there K plus that's potassium next we are saying they have a bowler head and a long non-polar hydrocarbon tail and therefore we are saying the bowler head comprises of a sulfate group which is written O SO3 minus or a sulfonate group which is written SO3 minus. So we're saying surplus detergent has a bowler head comprising of a negatively judged sulfate group which is written O SO3 minus or sulfonate group which can be written SO3 minus and a nonpolar hydrocarbon tail and we're saying it is cleaning action is similar or the same to that of soaps that means soapy detergent so next we are seeing soapless detergents are prepared from petroleum products and remember we said soapy detergents are prepared from fats and oil so we're saying the process of their manufacture involves three steps from one or the first step the hydrocarbon that's alkenes are reacted with benzene at high temperature to form alkyl benzene. So the alkene that we want to pick will be dodecene, and dodecene is an alkene with 13 number of carbon atoms. So if we remember the formula for alkene was CnH2n. So if I'm having C13, it will be H2 times 13, that is 26. So that means Dudkin has 13 carbon atoms and 26 hydrogen atoms. So the way they are written here is just the condensed structural formula. So you have to know they are just one and the same. And instead of you writing this, you can just simply write the bikin like this. Plus, this is how we write benzene or benzene molecule. So when they react at high temperatures, we are going to form a compound called 
alkyl benzene so the alkyl benzene look like this so what will happen first of all the double bond in alkene will break up and we are going to have an alkane so that means if we take 13 carbon atoms and we put in the formula for alkane what we are going to get or what we are going to have will be c13 h 2 times 13 is 26 plus 2 that's 20, 28 so we are going to have 28 but remember it is linking with the a benzene so that means one hydrogen will be replaced by benzene so what we are going to have there will be c13 h27 then benzene that's what we're going to have so if you write like this this way alkyl benzene or you write this way they are just one and the same even we can confirm so how many carbon do you have this is one carbon here we have 11 carbon it's plus one to half plus this other one 13 so we have 13 carbon atoms so how many hydrogen do you have we have two here and we have 22 here 22 plus 2 that's 24 plus 3 that's 27 so and i've explained the way we have gotten this formula first of all the double bonding to the key breaks up so there we are going to have alkane that's c13 h28 but one hydrogen will be replaced by the benzene okay the second step roman 2 we are told the alkyl benzene is treated with sulfuric 6 acid to form alkyl benzene sulfonate so how are we going to write this this is the way it is written so what we have here is the alkyl benzene this one it is reacted with sulfuric acid what we are going to get here is called an alkyl benzene sulfonate so let's write this formula in simple way the way we understand so we take this formula that's the alkyl benzene that's c13 h 27 benzene is how it is written plus sulfuric acid so what will happen what we are going to get will be we are going to have our c13 h27 then we are going to have our benzene so when we see sulfuric acid the way it's written it is h2so4 so one hydrogen will be just replaced by this bond there's a bond here then one hydrogen is nowhere to be seen so we remain with one hydrogen so4 so we are going to start first of all one oxygen then we are going to have one sulfur so we're remaining with more three oxygen then we were remaining with one hydrogen so that hydrogen will be written up there so that's how we are going to write how we are going to write our symbol equation for the second step that is the alkyl benzene reacting with sulfuric six acid to form the alkyl benzene sulfonate you remember this was the sulfonate group oso3 is the sulfonate group then i say roman 3 lastly we are told the alkyl benzene sulfonate is hydrolyzed with sodium hydroxide to form sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate which is the surplus detergent so here what is going to happen is that the acid that we are going to have here that's the alkyl benzene sulfonate will be reacting with sodium hydroxide and neutralization reaction will occur so that means we are going to get the surplus detergent plus water they are not showing the water but in our example we are going to show it so what we are supposed to do is we take the product that we had there bring it here then we said balas plus sodium hydroxide we said plus sodium hydroxide what will happen what will happen is that this hydrogen that we have here will be substituted with this sodium there so carry what you have the remaining that's c13 h 27 then we are going to have the benzene ring this is it then dash we are going to have o s o 3 then instead of h we are going to write the na 
So this part here is having negatively judged and sodium is obviously positively judged. So we are going to have balance. So check here, we are having one hydrogen there. And here we are having OH, that is a hydroxyl group. So when hydrogen combines with hydroxyl group, what we are going to get there is cool water. So this is how our surplus detergent is formed. So next we are saying the long hydrocarbon chain can be represented by R, thus the sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate may be written as the way we will see. So this R is the C13 and H27 that we hit. So we can represent it by R that is an alkyl. Then we are having the benzene. This is the benzene ring. Then we are going to have the sulfonate group. Then we are going to have the sodium ion or the potassium ion. So we are saying next the follow diagram below is a summary of the process involved during the preparation of surplus detergents. So this was the key. That's the first step reacting with benzene. When we are going to heat, what we are going to get is alkyl benzene, which we can write R alone. Then that alkyl benzene will be reacted or treated with the concentrated sulfuric six acid so that we get an alkyl benzene sulfurate. So the way it's written here, we're missing one O there. Okay, so that alkyl benzene sulfonate will be reacting or hydrolyzed with sodium hydroxide and we are going to have neutralization process or neutralization reaction there and what we are going to get is sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate which is our surplus detergent. This will be our surplus, surplus detergent or our detergent in simple words so next let's proceed to effect of hard water on detergents we are going to start part a soap detergents so we're saying hard water is water that contains dissolved magnesium and calcium ions it does not readily form lather with soap instead the water become becomes turgid all sodium and potassium salts including soaps are soluble in water and you say when soap is mixed with soft water it dissolves forming lava once in solution soap helps to loosen that particles making them easy to remove that's when we're going to use it for for cleaning so next we're seeing on the other hand when soap is mixed with the hard water dissolved calcium ions or magnesium ions react with soap molecules forming insoluble salts so we're saying this forms a suspension called scum this makes the water turgid so the question for that reaction will be calcium ion which is in the hard water when dissolved with sodium octadecanoid or the sodium stearate that is for soap or soap detergent what we are going to get will be sodium ion solution and calcium octadecanoid that's the scum or calcium stearate so next we are saying lather will only form after all the calcium ions or magnesium ions have reacted this means that a lot of soap will be used leading to wastage of soap then we are saying the scum is sticky and adheres to clothes making them that so but b what about surplus detergents so we're saying surplus detergents do not form scum with hard water as the calcium and magnesium complex compounds formed when calcium and magnesium ions in the hard water react with surplus detergents so they form soluble salts and they say they are the best use with hard water so if you want to use hard water for washing the best detergent to use will be soapless detergents because soapless detergents will not form scum with the hard water so next let's proceed to environmental pollution caused by detergents so number one we are saying detergents cause eutrophication and that is uncontrollable growth of algae and other water plants and this is due to the presence of nutrients and also phosphates in water bodies 
Next, we are saying this destroys the breeding grounds of fish and other aquatic animals. And next, we are saying eutrophication also leads to depletion of oxygen, leading to death of aquatic animals. So, number two, we are saying most detergents are non biodegradable. What does that mean, non biodegradable? That means they cannot be decomposed by microorganisms, hence, pollute the environment. Number three, we are saying detergents also contain nutrients which when drained into rivers will provide nutrients for aquatic plants which grow quickly leading to blockage of sewage systems and clogging. So next we are going to see advantages of soap detergents that is soaps. Number one, we are saying they are cheap. So number two, we are saying they are biodegradable hence does not cause pollution or does not pollute the environment. So next, let's see the disadvantages of soap detergents or soaps. We say number one, they form scum when used with hard water. So that means they are not the best to use with hard water. Number two, we are saying they are made from animal fats and balanced oils, which were made for human consumption. So next, we are going to proceed to advantages of soapless detergents. That is detergents. Number one. We are saying they do not form scum when used with hard water. That's why we have said they are the best to use with hard water. Number two, they are made from petroleum products, thus saving fats and oils for human consumption. So next, let's see the disadvantages of surplus detergents or detergents. Number one, they are expensive. Number two, they are non-biodegradable hence cause pollution or will lead to environmental pollution. Next, let us proceed to comparison between soapy and soapless detergents. So here we are having the soapy detergent and here we are having the soapless detergents. So number one, we are saying soapy detergents, they form scum when used with hard water. But when we are talking about soapless detergents, we are saying they do not form scum when used with hard water. Number two, Soap detergents are biodegradable, hence does not cause pollution. But when we're talking about surplus detergents are non-biodegradable, hence cause pollution. Then lastly, we are saying soap detergents are cheap, but surplus detergents, they are expensive. Lastly, let's go to the extended questions. We said we are having two extended questions. So this is question number one. We proceed to question number two. So learners, that's the end of our class today. Thank you for watching.